Having a proper light on your CNC machine is very important, especially when you are experimenting with feed rate and depth of cut. But having a PCB with LEDs that close to a CNC machine might damage it, so I designed a custom silicon mold and I cast epoxy on top of the PCB and I will tell you about the whole process of doing that in this video. In the previous video about a LiDAR robot I told you that math sometimes is very useful and once again in this video, even though it's simple, it was pretty useful and let me now tell you about how I unperfectly, perfectly designed this PCB. That's the wall schematic, just 8 LEDs and now we have to of course put these LEDs on a PCB. As you can see I placed the LEDs in a perfect circle and now the question is how to do this. There is a pattern function in Eagle but I have no idea how to use it. Maybe it works somehow but I also found a different way. So here you can see the position of this LED and it's easy to place this one, the one on the bottom and on the right. But how about those at a 45 degree angle? We'll need a few functions x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, that the circle formula. And then we have y equals x, just a line, and y equals minus x. And as you can see at the points where the line crosses the circle, we have the position of each LED basically. This is the first version of this PCB and the outside diameter is not big enough and the GND plane is not connected as you can see and you have a big visible air wire here that I didn't notice and I had to fix this small mistake and order it again. Always check your DRC before ordering the PCBs, remember about that. Speaking of ordering PCBs, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. I'm cooperating with JLC PCB for years now and they are producing all of my boards. They are really, really high quality, incredibly easy to use and quite fast. You can just drop your Gerber files on their website, choose your favorite PCB color, in my case that's black, and you are ready to place an order. You can also order an SMT stencil that I will use later in the video, PCB assembly process or even they offer right now a 3D printing service. Check out jlcpcb.com, there is a link in the description. Here is the first version that I made on a Dremel CNC here at home, here is the second version with a mistake, and here is the third version. I also added the SMD pads instead of THT pads for the power, and here are the boards ready for soldering. As you can see, mistakes happen, and that's totally okay. When the final version arrived, it was time to solder some PCBs. To solder the first prototype and the first few boards that I sold on my store, I used hot air and it was fine for just a few boards, but if you want to solder more of them, hot air is terribly, terribly slow. Let's also mention something about the SMT stencil, I used it to apply the solder paste to the boards and it's incredibly easy to use, just be careful because the edges are really, really sharp and it's so easy to cut your fingers with that, so I protected some of the edges with the tape and then you can just simply put the board in place. I used some other PCBs, sticked it with tape to the bottom of the SMT like pad, it's made out of wood or something like this. Later I replaced the PCBs with 3D printed part and that works much better. Also adding some kind of a key because the PCB is perfect circle so you can just rotate it and you have to rotate it to align it with the SMT stencil. So adding some kind of a key in the PCB and then in the 3D printed part to lock it perfectly in place is definitely a great idea and probably a future upgrade. So now we can go back to soldering and as I said using hot air is not really that efficient and generally is just a waste of time for more PCBs, so why not to use something different? I recently got one of these cheap soldering ovens for PCBs, I never tried using it before and just to point out um, there is actually quite a lot of upgrades you should add to this thing to make it safer to use and just generally better. I'm not going to do any of that in this video, I'm probably going to make another video just about using this soldering oven and upgrades. But today we'll focus on well, just soldering few PCBs and we'll see if it is actually usable out of the box without any upgrades. So just for a test I placed one PCB in the oven and I chose one of the predefined soldering waves. It heats up to about 250 degrees and it takes about 7 minutes. There is a small window in the oven, not really a lot is visible here but you can see something. And after the time I took the PCB out of the oven and tested it. And Seems to work fine, so I placed 6 PCBs at once, 
but I thought I would try the manual mode and turn on and off the oven on my own to make sure that it is soldered properly and here you can see the LED slowly moving and uh, that's when the solder is actually melting and unfortunately I turned the PCB for a bit too long and here is the result. I melted, like literally melted the LEDs on two PCBs and surprisingly they still work but are completely melted so obviously using the manual mode wasn't the best idea. Soldering with this oven wasn't hard at all. I actually expected it to be harder after reading some reviews online. It was pretty straightforward and except for my own mistakes, uh, there was no problems at all. And learning by mistakes is probably the best way, so I'm still quite happy. And now it's time for the most experimental part of this video, the part that may not go that well. I bought some chemical components for this project, the silicon for mold, the epoxy, some cleaning supplies, some additional things for future experiments and I actually had two ideas to get this thing to work. The first one was a 3D printed small container that will attach to the spindle light and then I will fill it with epoxy, you can see it here in the middle and I also 3D printed a mold for the mold that I will cast out of silicon. And here is something that I'm really excited to use for this project, a vacuum chamber. It's not really necessary, but it should improve the quality of the mold. Great features, high efficiency, perfect appearance and easy to carry, just in case if you want to travel with your vacuum pump. In this case, the vacuum chamber is made out of steel, with a top piece made out of really thick acrylic with some gaskets and valves and of course a vacuum pump. It's really easy to DIY something like this, but if you would like to buy it, I will give you a link in the description. If you have a model of what you want to cast, you can measure how much silicon you will need in Fusion 360 and then you can mix the silicon with the catalyst. It is a good idea to put it into the vacuum chamber after mixing and before pouring into the mold to get all the air bubbles out of the silicon, which I haven't done here but I did that later when making more molds. The oil level in the vacuum pump was pretty low, so I wasn't able to go any lower with the pressure than that, but it still worked pretty well and got most of the bubbles out of the silicon. And now it's time to open the valve. That is a perfect mold, looks great. The mold turned out just so so good, look at this fit, the PCB fits perfectly inside, even the pins that protect the holes from the epoxy are perfect. It is a really good idea to solder the cables now, because later it will be totally impossible. Here is the second 3D printed backup version, I can already tell you that the silicone worked much better than that and here I am mixing the epoxy and filling both the mold and the 3D printed part with epoxy. And here maybe and probably I made a mistake because I put those PCBs with the epoxy in a vacuum chamber and the result wasn't really that great. Pulling the PCB out of silicone was incredibly easy, the epoxy does not stick to silicone at all and here you can see the air bubbles. Of course the holes for the screws are not really that precise and are a bit too small to fit here M4 screws so I had to drill the epoxy a bit and that worked perfectly. Spindle light was designed to fit to 500 watt spindle and you can easily fix it with 4 screws, it fits perfectly, it is powered with voltage up to 12 volts. And here you can see it compared to my smartphone's flashlight. And that's it. Of course not, I mixed way more silicone with the catalyst because this time I want to make more molds for the spindle light and also a big mold for some concrete casting. I bought the oil for the vacuum chamber and now I can achieve way lower pressure and as you can see get more air bubbles out of silicone. This thing now is real time, it's not a time lapse. It looks really weird but it's also kind of beautiful. And now I'm filling 3 more molds for the spindle light and together I will have 4 molds which will help a lot to actually produce these things faster. And here is my big mold and a lot a lot of silicon, probably a bit different design and saving some silicon 
is a great idea. Once again, this is real time, and this is a time lapse. In this mold, as I said, I will cut some concrete pots for small plants. This time I decided not to use the vacuum chamber for the epoxy and the result is just so much better. Look at this, it is so clean. Maybe not on the back, but in the front it's just perfect. It's basically like glass. And that's it? Of course not, I will be selling the spindle light in two versions on my industry.cc store. Version with the epoxy and version without the epoxy, just PCB with LEDs soldered. You can check out the link to industry.cc and support my work if you want. And you can also buy parts here for the indie mill. If you prefer to make the spindle light or the indie mill on your own, you can find all the files for free on GitHub. Silicon molds, epoxy, vacuum chamber and the whole idea of waterproofing a PCB in such a nice way, most of that was totally new to me, yet it worked so well on the first try. If you ever thought about doing something like this, you should definitely try it because it's a lot of fun and it's quite easy to do. There is a link to industry.cc in the description if you want to buy the spindle light and support my work. I would really appreciate that. Thanks a lot to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video and of course to you for watching. Happy making. Bye. Okay, maybe one last thing. As you can see, I have no cable chains in the indie mill at the moment. I'm working on my own design. This is the second iteration. I also have the bigger version that will go right here. And I'm thinking about making a video just about a 3D printed cable chain. It may be boring, it may be interesting. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments.